are just so glad that Jesus is still passing by. We, we talk sometimes of salvation being in the past tense. You know, we have been saved. But I'm, I'm glad that Jesus is still passing by, isn't he? Not only have I been saved, I'm being saved, and one day I shall be saved. Aren't you glad that it's, it's past, it's present, and it's future? Praise the Lord for this opportunity to come and be with you today. I tell you, the, the, the choir just seems to get better and better every week, don't they? Uh, I just praise the Lord for the good singing and uh, for the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what makes it good. Uh, without Him, we're all nothing this morning. Desire your prayers and just want to do my best for the glory and honor of God. Good to see all of you here this morning, and, and it's good to have the health and strength to just be among God's people, and uh, we'll just worship the Lord. That's what we met for, isn't it? To worship Him. In the book of the Acts of the Apostles, if you have your Bibles, in the 16th chapter, I want to read just a few verses. It's found there, and trust God for message that he'd have us to bring this morning and I, I, want, uh, I want he the Holy Spirit to do the speaking through me. I want to yield myself and uh, my mouthpiece as an instrument for him to use and I, and I pray that he will do that this morning and, and if he will do that, uh, you, you know sometimes I think we we think we well, we've uh, we're here as a church that we might uh, see people saved, and that's that's good. You know, we we ought to want to do that. We're we're here to worship Him, and yeah, certainly we want to do that. But but if we will set our thoughts on just glorifying God, everything else will take care of itself, won't it? And, and so let's just do our best to just honor and glorify Him this morning as we've met. Acts chapter 16, if you found your places, would you stand with me please for the reading of God's word. Acts chapter 16, verse number 1. Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, was a Jewess and believed, well I'm, I'm skipping son, let me just read that again. Named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Thank you. You can be seated. I want to speak for just a few moments on this thought, the successful church. Based on the passage of Scripture, in verse number 5, so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. The successful church. I, I realize that maybe we could define that word success in a number of different ways and and I thought about that, and I, I, I thought uh, someday when the Lord will allow me to, I want to preach on just that, but uh, that's not the message this morning. But, but to, to, to be successful is not necessarily the number that grows. That's, that becomes part of it as we yield ourselves to the Lord. But to be successful spiritually, I want us to think about this morning. And Paul, or the Luke, I guess, uh, uh, describes for us the, uh, the uh, 
successful church and, and what it really looks like. We go through a, a lot of different stages in our lives to reach success. I, I heard about a very successful businessman. He was an elder gentleman and, and a younger businessman came to him and, and he said, uh, as he was starting into the business, he said, can you give me some tips on how to be successful? How did you get to be so successful in your business? This older gentleman, he said, by making good decisions. The younger businessman said, well, how do you get to the point that you make good decisions. The elder gentleman said, by life's experience. Well, the young gentleman still wasn't getting anywhere. So he said, just one more question. How do you get to the place that you obtain the life experiences so that you can make good decisions? The elder gentleman said, by making bad decisions. We go through a life span of, uh, of trials and failures many times, don't we? But, but if we're not trying, then we're not getting anything done. We may go forth in life and, uh, and we try things that falter and they fail, but we just get back up from them and we ask God for Directions to continue to go forward. It's those, uh, it's not necessarily uh, that we fail in our endeavors to, to do what, the God, uh, what God would have us to do, but, but it's our putting forth that effort. Then if that fails, we just get up and we start again. That's what, that's what makes the successful church today. Not that everything that we do turns out perfect. We know that it doesn't. But that we're, uh, that we're going forward and, and endeavoring to, uh, to move forward as the Holy Spirit would direct our lives and continually doing what God would have us to do. I believe the scripture here outlines some things here that will help us to become the spiritual successful church that God would have us to be. And I'm not just necessarily talking about Batley Baptist Church. I, I'm talking about the church in general, the born again believer in Christ. First of all, as we look at this passage of scripture, if we're going to have and be the successful church, we start off by being consistent as a member of God's church. Again, not necessarily this one, but any place that we are a member at, that we will, uh, that we will begin by being consistent in where God has placed us in the body. That's important. The Bible says that uh, in the 15th chapter of, of Acts, in the, uh, in the latter part of it, he says in the verse number 41, and he went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches. Now, uh, right prior to this, we'll see that uh, Paul had decided to go on that second missionary journey and he, uh, he and Barnabas decided that they would go and see how the churches were doing that they had established. And they wanted to confirm them. In other words, they wanted to, uh, to strengthen them. They wanted to, uh, to do what they could to encourage those churches that they had established. Well, there was a contention between Paul and Barnabas. There was one of those things that Paul probably could look back on and say uh, that was one of the things that I did and uh, that maybe I should have thought about a little bit more before I did it. But the scripture will declare unto us as we get over into Paul's epistles and that that thing was made right. And, and isn't that what God's people do? 
It's not that we fail or that we don't fail. Uh, It's not that we don't fail, but it's that we make it right when we do. And and so uh, here was these people um, that had established churches and and Paul saying, I want to go back and strengthen. I want to go back and confirm the churches where we have established and planted them. And listen, we see the writings of Paul and we see what great things that he did. Uh, We see uh, the number of books that he wrote in the New Testament and we see the glamorous and the glorious things about Paul um, that we hold up high today uh, in this day in which we're living in. I mean we read about them, we preach about them, uh, we teach about them and we see what a life that Paul had but you know where he started? By being consistent in the church. Going and confirming them. Uh, we see Stephen, uh, uh, we look at his life and, uh, and before Paul's life, uh, when Paul was still Saul at this time, and we see Stephen uh, preaching the message that he preached uh, in, the, uh, in the earlier part of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, how that he started from uh, in the Old Testament and he ended up in the New Testament uh, and, and he began to, uh, to talk about and to preach about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and when he did, did and there he was stoned because of his preaching but uh, they laid their garments at a young man's feet whose name was Saul perhaps influencing this great man we see the greatness about this this message that um, that Stephen preached and by the way us preachers sometimes we get accused of being long-winded you know what the longest recorded message in the, uh, in the Acts of the Apostles was preached by a deacon? <laughs> that ought to get an amen, hadn't it? Uh, but, but listen, uh, uh, where did Stephen get his start? Stephen got his start in the same place that Philip did and that probably uh, introduced the, uh, the gospel uh, uh, into the, uh, the great continent of Asia. Uh, they, they, uh, when we read about the glamour and the, and the great things that these men did, they got their start by being faithful into the church. Want to be? Uh, want to have a successful Christian life today, and then start uh, at the place where we all can do. We can be consistent, and we can be faithful in the very place where God has placed us right now. Look back in the sixth chapter of the, uh, of the book of the Acts of the Apostles and, and there was the, uh, the dispute that was, uh, that was being made uh, 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 in that day. There, uh, the Grecians were disputing against uh, uh, because their widows were being neglected uh, and, the, and the apostles said that, um, that we'll to search out these seven men um, that is uh, full of the Holy Ghost has an honest report. Guess who they? Uh, guess who two names was and um, that was mentioned uh, when they sought those men out. Uh, two of those uh, was Philip and there was Stephen, which tells us and um, that they were serving and they were faithful and consistent in the place where they were today. Someone said, well, uh, the deacons are called. No, and the deacons are chosen by the church. And that's what happened in that day. And you know why they were chosen to serve? Uh, probably the same reason and that these men served in Batley Baptist Church. And they were consistent and they were faithful to serve in the place where they were at. And they were men of honest report and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what it takes today, isn't it? Uh, If we're going to have a successful uh, uh, Christian life and uh, and be a part of a successful church, um, then we need to be consistent as a church member. And that includes being faithful, being grounded, being steadfast in the very place where we are at this present time. 
You know, Jesus talks about in some of his teachings. He said, uh, when you come into the place, uh, don't seek out the, um, the higher place, uh, but you take the lower place, and then you'll be called on uh, to take the higher place. Uh, but we sometimes, we try to do it backwards. Uh, we'll get an individual that maybe has good influence in the community, and if we can get him in church, and then we'll, uh, then we'll make something out of him. No, it doesn't work that way. Did you know Jesus works almost? Uh, he mo- almost backwards to everything that we think of. <laughs> he says, if you want to go up, you must first come down. <laughs> he said, if you want to be rich, you must first become poor. Listen, he works backwards to what we think things work today, and we must be consistent in the body where we're at. Be faithful where God has planted you if we're going to be successful. That's That's what these men did, but not only uh, consistent church members are faithful in the place where God has put them, but they are also eager to resolve the problems that come up. That's just what we are. And we talked about that uh, earlier. That, um, that, that's just what God's people do. We don't want to hoard problems and, and, and let them be at the forefront uh, of our lives, but we want to resolve them. They want to take care of them. In the 15th chapter, uh, the, the prior to, to this 16th chapter, 15 always comes before 16, by the way. Uh, but, but in this 15th chapter, it talks about how that there was the, the, the arguments that, that had come up. Some of the believing Pharisees, when, when some of the Gentile people started to be coming, coming into the church, some of the believing Pharisees says, well, we, we've got to have them circumcised. We've, we've got to take them back under the law. And the contention grew until the apostles and the elders began to meet. In other words, they formed a business meeting and they said, let's take care of this situation. And when they did and they formed that and they come together, and then they, and then they said, we'll, we'll, we'll agree then that we'll not put any weightier matters on these people except for those decrees and that we would have them to, uh, to keep, uh, which uh, is abiding uh, by the laws of God. And these decrees they were carrying out, uh, and Paul and Silas and, and these other men that came together, um, they agreed on this very thing. And when they did, we see what happens here, and that the church was established, and it grew in number daily. I want to tell you and that uh, God's people today, uh, we need to be consistent uh, as a member of the church and that has to do with being faithful where God has planted us. That has to do with resolving the problems in a Christian manner so that God can use us. If we want to be successful, that's a good place to start, isn't it? Being consistent as a member, as a church member. But but not only that, Uh, being consistent as a church member, but we need to be persistent as a disciple of the Lord, as a follower, as a learner. That's That's what the word disciple really means. It's a learner. It's a follower of Jesus Christ. Consistent as a member, but persistent as a disciple. In other words, we're going to continue to go forward. Listen, at uh, what the Bible says. The churches were established in the faith. They increased in number. And verse number 6 says, Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and for, were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Mysia, came down to Troas. Listen at what was going on. Here, and that gets us back to what we were talking about at the beginning. Here they wanted to be persistent as a follower of Jesus. Didn't want to let anything stop them. 
Do you know what you're going to find when you uh, decide that you're going to really be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? You know what you're going to find sometimes? You're going to find closed doors. It happens. Here they were. They were going into these places. They and they had good intentions uh, up on their hearts, and uh, and that gets us back to what Lonnie talked about in Sunday school this morning. Uh, sometimes we'll uh, do the work of God, but we do it without Him. I, I, listen, if we're going to be a successful church, we cannot leave God out of anything in our lives. He must be up front and foremost. So they were with good intentions. They were going into these places. They were going to Galatia. They, uh, they were going to, uh, to Fergie. They were uh, going uh, uh, with all good intentions of sharing the gospel. And, and, they, and they meant to, uh, to, to share what uh, the, uh, the, the things that the disciples had put upon them. They meant to, de- uh, to tell them to keep the decrees, but the Holy Spirit would not allow them to go. We're going to find places sometimes that God just shuts the door. Don't don't you imagine that they might have been wondering what's going on at this point? Here we are, we're we're taking uh, these decrees uh, that the church has uh, has taught us that we can take and we're doing it with good intentions, but doors are being closed. We're going to go through discouraging times as a Christian. Don't think that once you're saved, that everything's going to be rosy. It's not. We're going to have uh, problems that we face in life. For these disciples, it was closed doors. For us, it may be a rejection from somebody. For us, it may be persecution that we face along the way, or it may be a stoppage of what we thought was doing right. Uh, But listen, we keep going for the glory of God. We're persistent in following him. And after a while, if God closes the door, you know what that is. When God closes a door, that's just a prelude to him opening another one. <laughs> if God closes a door in your life at where, and that you feel like surely this is where God wants me and God closes that door, that just means there's another one open somewhere down the road. And that's what happened. They got to that place to be persistent. We must do it through discouragement. But to be persistent, we must do it through sometimes difficult situations as well. A vision appeared in Paul in the night, and we can speculate from where that vision comes from, but there's no point in that. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel there. And here they came. Verse number 11 says, Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothrakia and the next day to to Neapolis. Now, I, I got to doing a little bit of research on where those places were at and and if the and if my research help is correct, then from where they started out, from Troas to Neop- uh, Neapolis, there was about a hundred and fifty mile journey by the sea. Sometimes we look at these passages of scriptures, and, and we think it's maybe walking from one parking lot to another. You know that's not the way it was. I, I'll tell you, there, and there was difficult situations that they had to go through. But you see, Paul had heard the voice from Macedonia and that vision that said, come over and help us. And we gathered assuredly and that it was God wanting us to go there and share the gospel with them. And Paul was saying, I'm going to be persistent and following the Lord no no matter how difficult the way may get. And after that, if my sources again are correct, they traveled about 10 miles on foot after that. 
I, I don't know what things they may have encountered along the way, and, but I do know this, and that that's a long journey. And, and, and no matter what forces that they may have met, uh, what I want us to understand is this, no matter how difficult the situation is, we're persistent in following what God would have us to do. Whatever it is, just being persistent in doing the will of God. Keep our focus on Him. They delivered the decrees. They were focused on what God would have them to do, and they persisted in it. A couple more things. I've come to a close, but if we're going to be a successful church, we need to be also strategic in our witness of where. God sends us to be. Listen at what the word of God says. And from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. Now, it doesn't say they did anything. See, they, they just were guided by the Spirit of God. The Bible doesn't say that they did anything at all. They just were abiding there. For how long? We don't know. But we do know this. They were strategic in their witness. Did you know the Bible tells us to not even cast our perils among swine? Because they'll just trample them. And then they'll turn and rend you again. But God has the very place where we're to witness and, and to cast his seed. And they were there. You see, Paul always had a plan that he would go into their synagogues. And either one of two things would happen when Paul would go into their synagogues. Either a revival or a riot would happen. And sometimes both of them. That's what would go on. But, but there was no Jewish synagogues here. This was in Gentile territory. There, and there was no, this, was, this was new grounds for them. God had led them there. He had seen that vision. He had heard the voice. Come over and help us. He knew assuredly that it was God. And so he was abiding, waiting for the Holy Spirit to speak to their hearts. And then maybe while they were waiting, they heard about some women that was meeting out, having prayer meeting. And here, here Paul and his group goes out to that place where they were having prayer meeting. This Lydia, the seller of purple, came, invited them into their house. And guess what? The, ch the first church of that area was born out of that. You see, be strategic. In where God leads us and guides us. As I said a little while ago, uh, uh, we may try things that fail, but just get up and go again. I think about, and I thought about this, the church, and Lonnie had texted me last night, and, and, and he had told me, or one night this week, and told me about the upward program that was beginning. I'm, I'm thinking that's being strategic in our community, isn't it? Uh, the upward basketball program that you're using to witness and to draw people in, that's being strategic in our witness. I, I, I thought about the, uh, the, the bottles for babies that I saw out there and inquired a little bit about. That's being strategic in being a help. And there's just so many other things that we can get involved in. And, and if the Holy Spirit leads you into something, then by all means, be persistent and follow that be a successful church you know what might happen when we try something new we introduce something new you know what might happen it might fall in its face that's okay just get up and try again be persistent but all at the same time God might be in it a church was planted here in this place and begin to grow with souls being saved. We're in kingdom work, folks. <laughs> uh, it's good to be a part of kingdom work, isn't it? And I'll come to a close. Be consistent as a member. Be persistent as a disciple. Be strategic as a witness. And then last of all, be resilient as a soldier 
of God. Be resilient. Don't ever give up. I, I, I saw a funny picture one time that, that portrayed a great message. It was some kind of a great big bird with a long neck. I don't, I don't know what they're called. But anyway, this bird was trying to swallow a frog. And as he was trying to swallow the, flo- the frog, the frog was reaching out with a, if a frog has hands, but, <laughs> but a frog was reaching out with, a, with his hands around his neck to keep him swallowing. And at the bottom it says, don't ever give up. <laughs> don't ever give up. Oh, too many of God's people have just sit down and quit. If I personally ask you this morning, and I know some myself, but if I personally ask you this morning, probably every one of you this morning would know at least one person that used to be on fire for God that now no longer even comes to the house of God. Brother Greg, I know preachers that way that used to once preach the power gospel that no longer even go to church just be resilient one thing you can be assured of if you're going to go forward for the glory of God one thing you're going to be assured of is you're going to have criticism Somebody's going to criticize you. I don't care what you do. I don't care how you do it. I don't care how much prayer or how much effort you put into it. There's always going to be those critics that will try to criticize. I'm not going to take the time to go on into it here, but uh, but, but Paul and Silas were uh, were criticized because Paul was uh, just speaking the word of God uh, and uh, in that country they were called and they were thrust into jail, into the inner prison. But not only that, they were beaten badly with stripes. So we'll have to end, overcome criticism we'll have to endure persecution as well. I'd say they were pretty discouraged. You know, we get that with Christians, don't we? Am I the only one? (laughs) We, We get disappointed and discouraged as Christians. But there is nowhere to stop. You can't give up. Did did the Lord Jesus give up on me? Connie Cunningham for the song of invitation. Don't ever give up.